Wow, this looks like a major project we're doing today. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to finish off a bracelet like this. It's very Fabulous. similar to the bracelet above, just a slightly different size and shape. And what we have to do is we have, we're going to have to make one of these body components, and we'll show you how to do that, and the one end component, and we'll show you how to do that. And uh, you can see the peg pattern that we're going to use in the bracelet are these two right here. And that matches this bracelet right here, right? Exactly. And then the pink? The pink one, the pink wire here oh, it matches, uh, matches this that length. bracelet. So it's the same wrapping technique, just a slightly different pattern. One's so, on the vertical and one's on the diagonal. Uh, exactly. And what, what I would tell you is for a beginner, this slightly larger pattern is easier to make because you don't have, it's not as tight and constrained. Okay. You, you will find that it, as you get more advanced, you can make it out of this smaller pattern, but it's a little bit harder with the smaller pattern. Oh, okay. Pattern. So uh, what, what, we, what we need, the materials for this are uh, five segments of 18 gauge wire that are each four and a half inches long, uh, two segments of 18 gauge wire that are one and three quarters inches long. And then we used 10 segments of 22 gauge wire that are one and seven eighths inches long in order to make the wraps. Oh, so okay. the short wire makes the end, the long wire makes the body. We also made a clasp using our clasp instructions from an earlier video. Great. So now what we're gonna do is we'll we'll make this body component right now. So I need to clear the real estate here so I've got room to do it. And uh, with any piece that we make in our jig, the first step is always to straighten the wire. And the second step is almost always to make a loop in the end of the wire. So in this uh, piece of wire, we've already made, we straightened the wire and we've made our P loop. Great. So we're ready to go. And I would tell you that uh, for everyone, we're using good wire to make this, and that's because we've practiced this many, many times. But I would tell anyone who's making it for the first time, make it two or three times in practice wire, just so you get the technique down. And if you make your mistakes, you make it in your cheap wire. Don't make your mistakes in expensive and wire. And so practice wire is usually copper or brass? Yeah, copper okay. or brass, inexpensive wire. You can even buy it at the hardware store. Okay. 18-gauge uh, copper from the hardware store is a good practice wire. So I've cleared uh, pretty much the pattern here. I have room to go. Now I put the, oh, one thing. Uh, I should mention, how do you know what the pattern is? The way to, do, to find, figure out what the pattern is, is we have templates uh, that you can print from our web jig, from our website, for every one of our tools. And so what I did is I printed a template and then I marked the pattern on the template. And if I need to remember where the pegs go, I just line the template up with the jig and I can look through the jig and see where the pegs go. So if there's ever a question, the best way to do it is to create your own template, mark the template, and then you'll always know where the pegs go. So that's what we've done here. Now we're ready to make this piece. And, we start and you're by using what type of wire? 18 gauge wire. Yeah, but what, it's gold filled? Uh, this happens to be gold filled, yes. Okay. Again, for everyone, I would recommend you start with practice wire. And you're using half hard. I'm using half yeah, hard. Yeah, I, I like soft generally, but both work. Yeah, both That's would, the point. For both this work. piece, both would work. Now, when we're making a component with our wig jig tools, what you want to do People want to grab the wire by the end. That's human nature. You want to grab the wire by the end and pull it around. That technique is not very successful. What's a lot more successful is to push the wire with the tip of the index finger on your dominant hand. And I'm right-handed, so I'm using the tip of my right index finger. And you'll also notice that I have the wire part way up the peg. I paid for the entire peg. I want to use the whole thing. And it's a little bit easier on me if I start with the wire part way up the peg, because I don't have to lift the wire as far to get it over this peg when I make the loop. Now, the technique that we use works best for us is moving the jig and guiding the wire with the index finger on your dominant hand. So with my index finger, I guided it up and over that peg, and then I push it beyond. Now, 
the next peg in the pattern needs to go into a hole right there. What I need to do is push the wire, and you can see every time I push it, it springs back a little bit. I push the wire until I can add that peg to the pattern. So it's beyond the peg hole. I put it, I push it just beyond the hole, hole but now you can see that after pushing it, the wire stays right next to the peg. Okay. It, it, after springing back, it stays right next to the peg. Okay. And you just flipped it over, didn't you? Now, I'm going to flip it over here after each one of these loops. And the reason is that the finished piece will lay flatter when I do that. It'll oh, be okay. two layers of wire. Again, I'm pushing the same technique as before. Index finger guiding the wire halfway up the pegs. And I'm just pushing the wire with my index finger. And I'm moving the jig with my non-dominant hand. And there I pushed it too far accidentally. So you can see I have to push it back. But because it's springy, I've got to push it back a couple times until it ends up right next to the hole for the next peg in the pattern. Now, because I'm going to flip it over, I add that next peg right there. And I'm flipping it over, doing the same technique all over again. And I'm ready to add the next peg to the pattern. And I'm going to flip it over again. And I'm going to wrap it around here. And push it till it's right next to the hole for the last peg in the pattern. Then I'm going to add that peg and wrap it around the last peg. Now, if you have to, you can use your pliers to help you push the end of the wire like that. Um, and use your chain nose pliers. Those are the pliers you want to use. So, and the reason you want to use chain nose is to prevent marking on the wire? Yes, your round nose pliers will mark the wire. So the piece looks like this. It's ready to come off the jig, so I've got to pull it off. And you can see it's a little bit three-dimensional, and I've got this excess piece of wire at the end. So the first thing I have to do is use my flush cutters and cut the excess wire. Show the three-dimensional a little bit closer. I'm not sure that that was seen. Oh, yes. OK. It's not in a flat plane is the point you're making. Exactly. So now I cut the excess wire. And I'm going to use my uh, chain nose pliers, or my bent chain nose in this case, to close that final loop. And it's good and closed. And now the final step in making this component is to smush it flat with my nylon jaw pliers. So you can see I'm squeezing it in several different orientations, and I'm turning it as I go. And this sets the design and it hardens the design. And if your piece isn't perfect, you just do a little hand finishing to make sure everything's nice and even. And so that's our, our completed uh, body part. So now we're ready to connect that into the bracelet here. And we call that a uh, Celtic or a Celtic knot. Okay. Uh, now, I want this piece to connect into the rest of the bracelet in this orientation. And so as I connect these pieces, I have to be very careful to make sure that I connect them in the right orientation so that they connect up properly. So I got the first one connected. This is the toughest part of, the, of making this bracelet. Off camera, I'm going to finish this wrap here. Okay, and you can see that I pre-made these uh, wrap links so that this would be a little quicker. And I've connected the first one, and I want to use my bent chain nose pliers to wrap this closed. And so I'm gripping it with my pliers. So there are in effect two, two beads there, and you're doing the first one. I'm doing the first of two. Oh, and, okay. And, then, and you're doing it separately of the other one. Right. Okay. And then I'm wrapping it closed. And off camera, I'm going to finish this wrap here. 
Okay, I've completed the first loop. And, uh, so you've wrapped one of the beads to attach the link. Exactly, and it's kind of it's hard to do this with your arms extended. It's a lot easier to do it when your arms are close into your body. But if my arms were close into my body, you couldn't see it on the camera. Right, so I see. So you just what, did the first one. Right. So now I have to connect the second one, and uh, to connect the second one in the right orientation, it's a little tricky. And what I want to do is get that wire through so that it ends up in that position there like that. Okay. And so you can see. Now I'm going to wrap the second one uh, closed off camera. Okay. Just one second. Okay, we've got that second wrap completed and it looks like that. And one of the things that you probably noticed is that I pre-cut the wire and the, the wire length that we were wrapping around was relatively short. Uh, I measured it to be six eighths of an inch and that's you needed to have it a little bit short so you could have room to complete the wrap. You see the space? The first one's easy to wrap, nothing's in the way, but you, when you go to do the second one, you need that shorter uh, length in order to be successful in wrapping that. That's a little bitty trick there. Now we're ready to make uh, the final wire component, which is this wire component right here. That's an end piece, right? Yes. And uh, there's three pegs in this pattern. And I'm going to start with, with only two pegs in the jig, just like I did before. If I started with all the pegs in the pattern, uh, the, the extra peg would be in my way. And uh, the same technique, we're pushing with our fingers close to the peg. This time I'm using my thumb. push till the wire is right next to the hole for the next peg in the pattern, then add that peg. So the, the uh, wire component ends up looking like this. Now I have to cut the excess wire. close this loop here, I want to connect my clasp to it. And I need to open it up just a touch, I think. Yeah, I need to open it up just a touch. So I open this loop by lifting it up, connect the clasp, and then I need to slide the clasp around Oh, to the top loop. Right, to the top loop, the center loop in, in this component. So... To this one right there. Exactly. So you can see it's in that position. And I'm going to close this loop. And then I need to use my nylon jaw pliers to smush it flat. And that's what will hold the clasp in the right position. So I give it a good hard squeeze. So now the end loop and the clasp is ready. And I have uh, some pre-made wires uh, to get ready to wrap the beads. Wrap the beads. And I'm going to put it in position, close that. And off camera, I'm going to wrap these two beads. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And uh, as you can see, we made the first wrap adding these two beads. And we've connected our loop uh, to the end component there. And now all we have to do is wrap those two final wraps closed. And uh, you want to emphasize or explain to everyone that you've shown this as a technique in another video. Now we have another video on how, how to make this wrap. Right. right. So uh, it's pretty straightforward and we'll, let me just take a second here and I'm going to wrap these two finish, final links off camera. Okay, we got that wrap completed and uh, that completes our bracelet. 
One of the things about bracelets is, in general, you want to make a bracelet that's seven and a half inches long. That's the that's standard average size. size. Uh, some people need a little bit bigger one. That's you can you know add links if you need to, but uh, what we've done here is we've completed uh, that bracelet. It's gorgeous. And we've shown you. Uh, you know, a good beginner's approach using this pattern or a more advanced approach using the pattern on the diagonal. And the diagonal pattern is smaller. And what makes it more difficult is because it's smaller, you have less room. Beautiful, Gary, did a great job. Well, that's our project. Thank you.